Welcome back to the final segment of day two. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit live in Portland, Oregon. Three days of back-to-back -back, uh, continuous coverage. This is where the action is. This is all signal, no noise. Uh, this is Silicon Angle's The Cube. This is our flagship telecast. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Frick this week. Dave Vellante is back east holding down the support at wikibon.org. And uh, David Fleury is out in some sessions getting some more analyst coverage uh, here. We're on the ground, deep inside OpenStack. It's our, our wrap-up segment. Jeff, I mean, day two. Got one more day tomorrow, all day. And you know, a normal Cube gig, you know, go all day. But what's different here is we're really uh, uh, sharing some really amazing data around people doing some real valuable work. It's open source based. It's scale out open source. All the things we've been covering on cloud mobile and social, on SiliconANGLE, expanding the footprint conversation around value creation. And we just heard from Adrian Ionel from Mirantis. We had Jim Walker from Hortonworks. Roger Levy from HP. We had a startup, Demetrius Daliatis from Nuage. We had uh, Rightscale, Bailey Caldwell. We had Big Switch. David Cahill from uh, SolidFire, um, the CTO of Rackspace, on and on. Yesterday was the big analyst day, David Fluya broke that down. Really an amazing conference here, and uh, it's just been very impressive to see the level of quality here. And uh, you, know, you don't see this very often, it's one of those flashpoints in tech history where you look at it and you're saying, hey, you know, you know, when things cross over and start getting lift, it goes, you know, supernova and goes vertical. It, it's really, really impressive. Yeah, it really, it really feels that way. I mean, everyone is here is talking about how much smaller the show was only six months ago. I guess it was in San Diego. We weren't there. Uh, shame on us. But th th just the amount of information that's coming out and the learning and really a different way to look at the world. I mean, some of the, some of the more interesting ones that, that I thought of today was one, looking at flash memory. Uh, for, for storage and really changing the economic paradigm, the way I used to think about that, from really super high uh, performance, no latency applications, to with a cloud infrastructure, because you have the shared resources, you don't have a one-to-one -one mapping of storage to apps, and now suddenly the entire economics of that changes. The, of what Adrian just said was phenomenal, because you know we're talking to multiple He's talking about multiple open source movements that are redefining the infrastructure in the enterprise from SQL to Hadoop to MongoDB, and now he, you know, and I got to read it, to make it, OpenStack could be the unifying control plane for all the open source infrastructure in the enterprise. So, I mean, this is like, this is a phenomenal inflection point, at least it yeah. sure feels like it to me. Yeah, I mean, it totally is, and, and my breakdown on summary here in day two, really comes down to the fundamental uh, tenets of OpenStack's mission, which is provide new, uh, vendor neutral core open software, open source software, that um, allows customers to have choices, to build value. You know, we, re we referenced open, uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, you can't really tailor that to your needs as, as well as, say, OpenStack, and that's key. But the, the fundamental thing on top of that is that a successful platform in the open source community requires a community to actually contribute code, of which they're proven here, but you got to have good software. And you got to have an, an ecosystem that's innovative, not just marketing hype, and really innovating and delivering that code. And ultimately, uh, as Adrian pointed out, as well as others, successful users. The quality of the deployments, we've been hearing from that all day today. Again, the theme is people are coming forward, standing uh, loud, uh, tall, uh, loud and proud on their, on their success, and they're sharing that. And that's really uh, a vibrant community. Now, Take that back to reality. Let's translate this to the real world. The real world, what's going on in the real world is people have to invest. They're investing in IT infrastructure, whether it's a cloud provider to provide all the, the consumerization trends, Pinterest, all that great stuff that's happening, Facebook, all that stuff's happening. Those types of apps and mobile apps are going to continue to hit the scene. Analytics software, big data, you know, HP pointed that out. That's happening at the same time. 
enterprises need to retool because the business model and the pressure to be competitive and stay in business is to have new applications and to be agile, to, to go from having something done and taking 12 weeks to, to ship on your IT infrastructure to, to 15 minutes is a complete shift and transformation. Those investments have to happen and the people aren't really in place. They're getting in place. You're seeing a, a huge buildup of, of, of resources and, and investment to make that happen and that's key. Now we've seen this movie before, client server, mainframe to client server, and then client server to the PC revolution was all part of that same revolution. And the number one issue, Jeff, that people pointed out during those days were, was interoperability. Still, the number one thing here at OpenStack is this stuff needs to work across clouds. The interoperability piece is the big story. Tomorrow we'll, we'll drill down on the interoperability. But again, ecosystem, Great software, successful users, they're doing it here, and the thing that's still on the to-do item that's constantly being addressed is the interoperability. Yeah, but as, as David uh, Foyer said, you know, with the advancing technologies, and he was, he was pointing out I.O. is kind of the latest one to, to take a quantum leap to, to change the way these applications work, the, the processing horsepower, the speed of the networks, I mean, you're getting this critical, this critical mass of, of computing capability that are enabling things that before were difficult. But I think there are other stuff, you know, Jim Walker talking about the community, but not only a community, but a passionate community. And when you're throwing that types of resources at innovation, how they can attack uh, high priority problems so quickly that you just, it, you have a difficult time replicating with, with, uh, with people that are just working for a living. You know, that, that's a very different way to attack the problem. I thought, again, uh, Adrian from Marantis to talk about taking one of his core pieces of software, competitive advantage, and throwing it out into the open source community because he felt that the net net positive effect of the company and the adoption of that piece of software and the use of that software to support the open stack would be a net net positive. I mean, this is transformative thinking. And, and, and then the third piece, I think, both the young kids that are coming up and are used to being able to spin up um, a development environment on AWS, plus, the expectations of uh, the rate of change in consumer applications, because you know, Google changes and it added maps and it added satellite view and then it added street view. You know, there's an expectation that people are getting with some of these really advanced consumer applications that are now driving th those young developers are at these big companies saying, hey, you know. I want to change this, I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting to provision. I'll just use my credit card and, and fire up something. I'm not waiting 12 months to implement this, this feature. So it's really kind of an interesting kind of bottoms up transform, transformation that's now hitting the enterprise and getting yeah. legitimate. You know, I think David Floyer, who was given the analysis and we're going to have to rerun that segment multiple times because I think that was a, a great segment that unpacked some of the nuances. And, and we talked about agile infrastructure where I was highlighting uh, NetApp and NetApp was on yesterday. And I think NetApp is a great example of a company that believes in agile infrastructure, data protection, all the things that they, you know, it's their core business and you know, that's you know, normal NetApp. But what NetApp was talking about in addition to yesterday was this notion of non-disruptive operations. And David Floyer from Wikibon um, really helped me understand that, that piece and that relates to what's going on in OpenStack. And that is, is that non-disruptive operations means you have to plan for downtime. This is not about five nines anymore. This is an aggregate view. Applications go up, go down, servers go up and down, VMware's go up and down, uh, virtual machines go up and down. So things are going up and down. These planned outages have to be factored in to the design for non-disruptive operations because there will be unplanned downtime, there will be planned downtime. That's a holistic view of the data center. There's no longer one view of the world where there's vendors. So it's a, it's a choice world for Customers, yeah. and that's the exciting thing that's happening here is that OpenStack is the great promise with real code. Again, I was critical of OpenStack. We've been following OpenStack since the beginning. It kind of looked like a pool party. People jumping in, big splash, you know, having some fun, doing some marketing and hyping up cloud, but what happened quickly was they reined that in and they really put that meat on the bone and it's very clear that that is no longer the case in any way and uh, this is really a real deal. OpenStack is here to stay and um, the, the numbers here and the quality attendees prove that uh, they're being successful. Yeah, I, I would agree and, and I think just from a purely um, uh, an, an exploration of the way an open source foundation uh, starts, develops, thrives as this is kind of the fourth or fifth big enterprise yeah. um, open source uh, initiative uh, that was described with databases and operating systems and uh, and the big data, 
that this is an interesting case study. You know, there will be case studies done on how this was successful and how they've leveraged what came before to not make the same mistakes, put in the proper governance, and really drive the community that, again, we have a guy here who's, who's excited about it, came from Microsoft with 10 employees, and then today we have HP with, what do they have, 300 employees. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. I think the other thing that's notable is that, as David Floyer pointed out, is that the big whales, HP, NetApp, EMC, IBM, these guys aren't going away anytime soon. This is going to be a transition. It's not about, okay, they're killing the, the, the big whales. They're also here in the community. So, you know, HP is a major platinum contributor to OpenStack. They really are investing heavily in it. And they said, I said, what inning are we in? He said, the Star Spangled Banner hasn't even been sung yet. So, HP is aggressive. EMC, these guys all have the resources. The question is, can they evolve to this new modern era? The new modern era is about low latency, services driven, service apps, and making that all happen all in an open framework with layers of software, you know, on the low end of the stack, the infrastructure, all the way up to the platforms, and ultimately, I believe that you're seeing the, 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 the actual formalization that SaaS suffers a service business model is not only here to stay, it is the preferred in, uh, solution for business in the future. And you can't have SaaS without platform as a service and or infrastructure as a service. So as uh, I think it was HP said, the SaaSification of business uh, is here. And that, that's, that's just the bottom line. Yep, yep, I think you're right. I think okay. it's been a great day and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, day three. <laughs> <laughs> this is SiliconANGLE's exclusive OpenStack coverage. We are here on the ground all day long. Uh, if there's a story here, we're going to find it. Um, if not, we'll follow up. That's our, that's our mission, SiliconANGLE. We keep on, go to siliconangle.com for all the reference points for tech innovation, emerging technology, the enterprise. We're covering Google, we'll be at Google I.O., we'll be at Sapphire, we have IBM Edge, HP Discover coming up, we've got VMworld this year as well, we've got a slew of other events, Amazon Web Summit, uh, uh, Amazon Web Services Summit on the, on the 30th of this month, uh, Amazon reInvent, we are going to be deep digging deep into the cloud with our breaking analysis and all the free research on wikibon.org. So go to wikibon.org for re re free research. And again, we'll be here all day tomorrow, day two, wrapping up right now. We'll see everyone tomorrow, day three of the exclusive OpenStack coverage of SiliconANGLE. I'm John Furrier for Jeff Frick and I. Uh, good night and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>